Hi everyone, this is Asma Mushtaq from the W Vibes and in today's lecture I'll explain how you can implement any boolean function using the multiplexer or the mux. So I'm going to solve the end problem of the Morris Mono or which is actually 4.3 to part A and part B and you can see here the function has been given as the four variables a b c d and it's given as the summation of the min terms 0 2 5 8 10 and 14 okay for implementing the function using the multiplexer the first step is to construct the corresponding boolean combination of the variables since here are four variables present so i have written four variable possible combinations that are actually 16 or equivalent to 16 fine the next step is to mark one corresponding to the min term numbers given so min term 0 was equal to 1 that's why i have written the function f is equal to 1 corresponding to min term 0 similarly 1 is not present over here that's why function value is equal to 0 and same is done for the rest of the min terms 2 5 8 10 and finally 14 for the 15 the function value is actually equal to 0 okay so in this way i have actually mentioned the function in terms of its truth table the next step is what this is very important step and uh, you must listen or pay attention to it okay we will do what we will actually leave the last variable or we will partition, uh, partition it from the rest of the variables fine and that's why you can see i have drawn a line separating it from the rest of the variables in this case d is the last variable that is actually required or being used in the function representation and the rest of the variables are a b and c the next step is to represent or partition further inputs where their combinations remain same so a is 0 0 b 0 0 and c is 0 0 while d is changing from 0 to 1 that's why i will draw a partitioning line over here and same it will be extended up till the definition of the function okay So let me do it quickly. Once you have performed this partitioning, the next step is to decide how many select lines are here. So the remaining variables will act as the select lines of the multiplexer. Since A, B, C are three variables, so select lines will be equal to three okay and you know that for n number of select lines you have two raised to power n input lines okay so in this case how many input lines will be here two raised to power three is equal to eight hence we will have eight input lines three select lines and the corresponding output function which is actually equal to of single bit fine so we will use 8 to 1 line multiplexer or mux fine okay the last variable that is actually left from the combination is oh, is very helpful and we will write the function in terms of this last variable d so here you can see when d is equal to 0 f is equal to 1 when d is equal to 1 f is equal to 0 so you can say that this function is actually the complement of d for these combinations of a b and c equal to 0 similarly when a b both are 0 and c is equal to 1 you can see that again f is equal to 
d complement why because when d is equal to 0 f is equal to 1 when d is equal to 1 f is equal to 0 okay in the next step you can see here f is equal to d and again here the function is having its value equal to 0 although d is changing so you will say f is equal to 0 in this case similarly here f is equal to complement of d f is equal to complement of d f is equal to 0 and here again f is equal to complement of d so basically the function can take its form in terms of the last variable as f is equal to d or f is equal to d complement or f is equal to 0 there can be a scenario when the function can take its value equal to 1 these are the four possible outcomes of the function in terms of this variable and the constants okay now let's draw the 8 to 1 9 multiplexer eight cross one line multiplexer and here we will have eight input lines starting from i0 i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 i6 and i7 so basically 8 input lines are drawn this is the output of the function and obviously here I will draw the select lines and these select lines can be A, B and C so starting from so starting from the S line S0, S1 and S2 these are the select lines that have been mapped to the input lines in this order so select line 2 is equal to a select line 1 is equal to b and select line 0 is equal to c that's why 0 0 0 0 0 0, 0 then 1 fine in this way it will actually work okay now back to here when a b c are equal to 0 f is equal to d complement so the first input is actually d complement let's see if you are having d input right over here and i take the inverter of this input so f is equal to d complement similarly when a b c are basically equal to 1 or their decimal value is equal to 1 then again f is equal to d complement so i will make common this input right here and next is f is equal to d for the i2 i will give path it right from here next is f is equal to 0 when third input is present that's why you will ground it or you can actually apply the zero potential right here for f is equal to i4 or the for the select line 4 you can see f is again equal to the complement of d i can actually take d complement and pass it right there similarly f is equal to 0 again this pin will be grounded and the last one is f is again equal to d complement so let's give it path right here in this way this circuit is designed using 8 to 1 line marks so what happens when you select a b or c you can see that let's say we are choosing this combination where a is equal to 0 b is equal to 1 and c is equal to 0 so when a is equal to 0 b is equal to 1 and c is equal to 0 basically we are concerned which 0 1 0 corresponding to second input i2 and the second input is actually giving us the function value equal to d just like it's mentioned over here so d will be forwarded at the output line in this way we can implement any function using the multiplexer in the part b 
you have been asked to implement the function again using a multiplexer but this time 